Today is World Prematurity Day. Every year, about 15 million babies are born preterm or before 37 weeks of pregnancy. Recently, the World Health Organization updated their guidelines for how to care for premature babies. Joining me now is Dr. Gary Darmstadt, professor of pediatrics and co-principal investigator of the Prematurity Research Center at Stanford Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Great to be with you. Thank you, and happy Prematurity Day. Yes. Let's talk about that. Why is preterm birth so common? Well, it occurs in, in about 11% of births all over the world. It's higher in some regions than others. Like in South Asia, it's really quite high. and mm -hmm. In areas of Africa, it's lower. Um, it, it comes about for a whole variety of reasons. Often we don't know why, why it occurs, but it may be from infections. Uh, smoking is an important risk factor. Uh, you know, it turns out it varies in, in certain subpopulations and stress is a, an important cause. And we see this more often in, in uh, associated with racism, for example. Wow. Gender discrimination, gender based discrimination. Wow. You know, I want to get to these WHO guidelines. You led a group of international experts who developed these updated guidelines. What are, the, what are some of the most important recommendations that you found? Well, there, there's some a couple that are really exciting that have to do with the, the role of parents in caring for their preterm infants. You know, around COVID, we, we saw that, that parents often were excluded even from neonatal intensive care units where their preterm infant was being cared for. The WHO has said that parents are the, the really the key providers for their infants. They're part of the team. Uh, they should not be considered visitors. They should be involved in the routine care of their baby. They should be right there at the bedside with the care providers. They should be involved in, in decision making and they should be supported in this role. They should be provided the, the education, the counseling, the peer support that they need in order to play that role. So these are a couple parental involvement and parental support that are that are new. And there really are quite a shift in, in calling for, for parents to be there at the bedside. Uh, another that, that's really important is kangaroo mother care. And this is where a mother, or it could be a father, uh, holds the baby skin to skin. Mm. And it keeps the baby warm. It promotes breastfeeding. It prevents infection. It reduces mortality of preterm infants by about 35%. And uh, this is something that's being called for all over the world. Uh, it has certain implications. You have to keep the mother and the baby together in order uh, for kangaroo mother, ter ca kangaroo mother care to occur. So there may be changes in, in the way we organize care. Uh, typically, mothers are cared for in one part of the hospital. Newborn infants are cared for in another. We're calling for them to be together mm -hmm. uh, so that we can provide kangaroo mother care. There is nothing more magical than when you have that baby and all of a sudden they are on your chest and you're, there's that bond that just, it's a moment that, that is so uh, invaluable, no question, when you become a parent. Right. The World Health Organization yeah. says majority of preterm births, and you brought this up earlier, happen in Africa and Southern Asia. So why does it occur right. more in those regions and how will these recommendations affect those areas? Because in many of those spots, they don't have the sophisticated hospitals that we have here in the States. Well, the, the reason that more preterm births occur in Africa and South Asia is there are more births there. You know, the, the proportion of births that are preterm is, you know, fairly similar around the world, about 11 percent, a little bit higher in Asia than, than Africa. Uh, some of the local conditions may vary and, and, and the rates may vary. Um, but it's important to know that, that the recommendations that, that we formulated are for every baby, every preterm infant all over the world. Uh, we do recognize that, that health systems are in different states of development and, and different health systems are going to have more or less challenges in introducing some of the things that we're calling for. For example, we're recommending uh, continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, the same thing that we use for sleep apnea. It, it's extremely beneficial in preterm babies and keeping their airways open. Uh, we're calling for the use of caffeine. Uh, we drink it every morning to kind of wake up. Oh, well, it turns out it helps preterm infants to breathe better. Wow. And it, it's helpful in uh, preventing spells of apnea uh, where a baby stops breathing. Uh, it's used for treatment. 
are calling it um, for, for use in prevention. Uh, turns out it's fairly expensive. So that's something that we're going to be able to get easily here. Uh, doctors in Tanzania, for example, it may be extremely difficult mm -hmm. for them to get. So we're going to have to think about supply chain issues. There are costing issues around medications that, that need to be dealt with. And it's so wonderful that this research and these recommendations are being updated and, and done here. All right, Dr. Gary Darmstadt from Stanford Healthcare, thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure.